could take a movie of the mind sense of itself and be erratic and mercurial, like a reflection on water, moving here, moving there, changing its shape all the time. Identifying with this, identifying with that. When they talk about the five khandhas, some people think when the Buddha describes the five aggregates, he's just describing that's what we are. And it's precisely what he says, that's not, we're not, we're not that. But the mind does identify with these things, sometimes with your body, sometimes with your feelings, perceptions, thought formations, sometimes with sensory consciousness, sometimes different combinations, all of, all of the above. And it's in running around and changing its position all the time like this that the mind expends a lot of energy. One of the things we try to do as we meditate is to stay in one place. As long as you're going to have a sense of self, keep it solid, rock solid, immersed in the body. Breath meditation is one way of staying immersed in the body. The term they have in Pali is kayakata, siddhi, mindfulness immersed in the body. And this quality of immersion is important. You want to fill the whole body, you want to occupy the body, inhabit your whole body as much as you can. Where is your observer right now? For many of us, it's set as if it were some sort of weird bird perched on our shoulders looking through our eyes. And it watches the body as if the body were something separate. And as we meditate, we're trying to get away from that particular observer. We want to be an observer that's filling the whole body. Your feet fill your feet, your hands fill your hands. All of your sense of who you are fills the body. This puts you in a position of strength. Because if you're leaving big gaps in your body that you're not occupying, well, other things are going to occupy it. Different thoughts, different defilements. But if you occupy, if you occupy your body, your awareness occupies your whole body. When anything comes into the mind, you're going to know it. You're going to see it because you're right there. You're not off in some other corner of the body looking at something else. So as you focus on the breath. Try to get past the idea that you're in one part of the head watching the breath in other parts of the body. You want to be bathed in the whole breath. You want to, the whole breath in the body should, should be surrounding your sense of where you are. And then you want to maintain that sense of being centered in the body like this, filling the whole body with your awareness as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Because the sense of filling the body helps you stay in the present moment, for one thing. When the mind goes off thinking about thoughts of past and future, it has to shrink its sense of awareness, shrink its sense of itself down to a, a small enough si size so that it can slip into the past, to slip into the future. In other words, the part of the body that you use as a basis for thinking about the past and the future, you, you latch on to that. And other parts of the body get blotted out. But if you're filling the whole body with your awareness and maintain that awareness, you can't slip off into the past and future unless you decide to. So this is one way of nailing you down at the present moment. When you think of the breath coming into the body, think of it coming into the whole body. Every cell in the body is participating in the breathing process, and you're sitting here in the midst of it. And your sense of self has a sense of greater solidity. So when thoughts come into the mind, you're not knocked off, balanced by them, because you've got this foundation. The word they use for the object of meditation in Pali, Aramana, literally means support. The idea being that your mind is standing firm on something. So you're standing here in the body. This is your location. This is where you take your stance. And when your stance is solid, nobody can kick you and knock you down. It 
It's like riding on the subway in New York. The subway sways back and forth and up and down and around. And if you have your stance planted just right so that you don't get knocked over either by the acceleration or deceleration of the train or the swaying to the left or the right or whatever, you can maintain your balance no matter what happens to the train. And life is a lot more erratic than a subway train. The things that happen around you, sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, things that people do, things that people say, they can hit the mind with a lot more violence, a lot more force than the wobbling of a subway train. So the mind needs to have a stance. This is why we work on this support for the mind. Not only while we're sitting here meditating, we want to carry this support throughout our day. And some people complain that it's asking too much of them to pay attention both to the events of the day and to the breath. Well, if you're sitting in the back of your head watching the breath in the body and watching things outside, it does add an extra burden. You've got two things to watch instead of just one at any one time. But if you think of yourself as immersed in your body, inhabiting your whole body, this puts you in a different position. You're standing on the breath. You're standing in a position of solidity a position of strength. From that position, you watch things outside. So instead of having extra things to do, you're, you've simply got a better place to stay, a better place to take your stance and maintain your stance. If your sense of self is inhabiting one little part of the body, and things come in from the outside with great force. Someone does something or says something that hits you the wrong way. You can get knocked off balance really easily, because your stance isn't solid. The mind is so used to flitting around from one position to another that it's very easily knocked off balance. But if you're standing, filling your whole body with your awareness, and this is your stance, this is your support then no matter what comes, you realize you're not, you don't have to be knocked off balance. So you want to maintain this sense of inhabiting your body, being bathed in the breath, surrounded by the breath on all sides, not only while you're sitting here, but also as you go through the day. To have this quality of being immersed in the body, fully aware, fully mindful, fully alert. Once you can maintain this stance in different situations, then you can start observing this sense of self that you've created here. If the self, if your sense of self is flitting all around, first with a the feeling, then with a the perception, and back to a feeling again, perception and feeling, with those weird amoeba-like shapes that flit across the surface of water. It's hard to observe to get a sense of what is this sense of self? Why does the mind need to have a sense of self? But if you maintain this one sense of self, inhabiting the body, immersed in the body, surrounded on all sides by the breath, it's there long enough for you to observe it. What's it made of? Where is the form here? Where is the feeling? Where is the perception? Where are the thought formations? Where is the consciousness? It's all right here for you to observe, relatively still, so you can watch it. So there are lots of advantages to having the sense of mindfulness immersed in the body, your sense of self immersed in the body. Eventually you take it apart, but in the meantime you learn how to use it. So you don't get knocked over by all the winds of the world, all the currents of the world. You don't get knocked over by the currents that come flowing out of the mind, either. When they talk about taking the body in and of itself as your island, as your refuge, this is what they mean. The currents flow past, but the island stays solid. because that is a good foundation, deeply rooted.
you've got your awareness deeply rooted in your hands, in your feet, in the different parts of your body, not just in the head, not just flitting around from here and there. A large sense of awareness filling the present. This puts you in a position of strength, and then you want to maintain this position of strength as long as you can, both because it helps ward off the currents that come flowing from outside or from inside, and also because it allows you to see your sense of self a lot more clearly. To understand what it is, to where there's still suffering even in this position of strength, where there's still stress and uncertainty and inconstancy. But first you do your best to make it constant. How are you going to believe the Buddha's teachings on inconstancy until you've tried your very best to find some constancy in your own awareness? You push the limits. It's only when you really push the limits like this that you can gain a true sense of where things start pushing back. When the Buddha gave his teachings, he didn't simply ask for people to believe what he said. He said, push back a little bit inside yourself to test them. So inconstancy, stress, not self. How do you test those? By creating a sense of constant ease in the body, because this awareness has to be relaxed in order to last. And you can identify with it. Inhabit it fully. It's only in this way that you can push against the limits and see where the principles of inconstancy, stress, and not self will push back, even in this state of mind. But work on it first. Remember, this is a skill. Taking this stance and maintaining this stance. Being concentrated in the body, but concentrated with a sense of ease, so it doesn't become oppressive in the body. It's filling the body with your awareness. So if they were to take a picture of your sense of self, the mind's sense of itself, it would be like that image they have in the canon of a person sitting totally surrounded by a white cloth from head to foot. Or John Lee's image of a mantle of a Coleman lantern, all its threads bathed in a bright white flame that doesn't seem to move. Try to saturate your body with this sense of relaxed but steady awareness, and see what happens as a result. 